The Earned Life by Mark Ryder and Marshall Goldsmith. This summary is brought to you by Hook My Book. We go through periods of happiness, meaning, purpose, engagement, relationships, and achievement, but these states of happiness are fleeting and can change at any time. The author says that there are two polarities in our lives, fulfillment and regret. Fulfillment is when we feel happy, accomplished, engaged, and connected to others. Regret is when we feel unhappy, unsuccessful, disengaged, and alone. In this book, the author offers helpful advice on how to overcome regret. Regret is the emotion we experience when we think that our present situation could be better or happier if we had done something different in the past. Regret is usually created by our own actions, and it's within our control to avoid it. To reduce the frequency of regret, we should be open to opportunities that come our way. The author discusses the concept of an earned life. Earned lives are lives that are lived in alignment with an overarching purpose, no matter the outcome. This purpose can come from anything, such as earning money, winning an election, or being a good parent. Each of us has a sense of what an earned life should look like, and we strive to achieve it. However, earned lives are not always permanent or satisfying. They can be short-lived and full of regret, because happiness and satisfaction often come and go quickly. People often work hard to achieve something in their life, and once they have it, they feel a sense of accomplishment. This is called earned success. However, some people feel that their success does not equal an earned life because they do not have a larger purpose in their life. Choosing your life. The Buddha said that life is a cycle of rebirth, and that each moment is unique. We experience pleasure, happiness, sadness, and fear in each breath, but those emotions eventually dissipate. He said that the only iteration of us that matters is the present. We cannot control the past or the future, but we can control our present. The every breath paradigm is about accepting that everything that we have earned, be it a teacher's praise, a good reputation, or reciprocal love, is impermanent and will eventually fade. This applies to our personal development as well, as we must constantly re-earn these things by being someone new. We are never finished earning our life. There is no hard stop moment when we can tell ourselves, I've earned enough. I'm done. What's stopping us from creating our own life? Inertia is something that we encounter in our everyday lives. It is a force that resists change, but it can also be used to our advantage. Inertia is the most determinative opponent of change, but we have a choice in how we respond to it. Inertia is a helpful tool in predicting our immediate future, but it is not the only factor that affects our future. Other factors play into our lives. Your parents shape your beliefs, your social values, how you treat other people, how you behave in a relationship, and which sports teams you cheer for. They do this unconsciously, through observation and repetition. Your parents also program your self-image. If you're not careful, this can lead to a life of complacency and conformity. You can deprogram yourself by challenging the validity of your excuses. Some people feel like they have to choose between two or three options to lead their life the way they want, but others feel like they can be more creative and come up with more ideas if they're not limited. It can be confusing when it comes to choosing a life path, but it's a process that can be improved with experience. The author describes how parental influence, obligation, mental block, peer pressure, and inertial devotion to the status quo can be obstacles to taking action. These obstacles can be overcome by remembering our latent powers and how to deploy them. The Earning Checklist The four essential success factors are desire, talent, intellect, and self-belief. But, they are not universal, and each person has their own set of strengths like creativity. It is also important to remember that these are task-specific, and do not apply universally to your life. For example, there is no such thing as a motivated person, because none of us is motivated to do everything. We are selectively motivated, and driven to do one thing but not another. Motivation being motivated is not merely a supercharged emotional state induced by having a goal. 
It is that heightened emotional state coupled with an action required to achieve that goal. People are motivated by different things, but usually what is motivating someone is related to what they want to achieve. For example, if someone wants to be a good teacher, they may be motivated by wanting to help their students and make them learn. Motivation is a strategy, not a tactic. Motive is the reason we act in a certain way. Motivation is the reason we continue acting that way. Ability. Your ability is the level of skill you need to succeed at your chosen task. You have different abilities depending on your mood, situation, and surroundings. If you are feeling motivated, it should not be a problem to stay motivated to do something you excel at. However, if you are not feeling motivated, your ability may be less than optimal. Understanding. Understanding is your knowledge of what to do and how to do it. To be successful in any situation, understanding is important. Confidence. Confidence is the belief that you can succeed. It comes from a combination of things, like training, repetition, and a string of successful results. When you have confidence, you're able to face challenges that you've successfully overcome before. A less appreciated source of confidence is having a skill that other people don't have. For example, a marathoner might have confidence in their speed, which would make them faster when it matters. How to find fulfillment. The answer lies in three pieces of information, what you're doing right now, what you want to achieve in the future, and what you aspire to be. Action is what you're doing right now, and it reflects the conscious choice you've made. Ambition is what you want to achieve in the future, and it's time-bound, ending when you achieve it. Aspiration is who you aspire to be, and it's a continuous process that's not based on a specific goal. According to the author, aspiration is a huge difference maker in our ability to create our own life. When we aspire to something, we go through a process of detours, surprises, and hardships that eventually leads to an outcome we could not imagine. The best case scenario is that in aspiring to be something, we learn to love that thing, and the worst case scenario is that we find something else to devote our lives to. Aspiration is also one of the most effective regret avoidance mechanisms in our lives because it allows us to know whether our efforts will be satisfying or futile from the outset. Find your genius. The main point is that it takes many years to figure out what one's genius is. Sandy Og, for example, is an expert on identifying talent and leaders who add the most value to an organization. He did this by studying data and developing a methodology. It usually takes many years for someone to figure out what their genius is. Remember this the next time you wonder why it's taking you so long to identify a job or career that fully engages and fulfills you. You need years of experience to develop the knowledge base, work habits, and relationships that will enable you to be considered an expert in your field. Measure your progress. Measurement is important because it helps us to understand our priorities. If we want to achieve a certain goal, we need to measure how well we are doing to determine how much harder we need to work. For example, if someone wants to lose weight, they might step on a scale each morning to measure their weight. Life Plan Review LPR. The Life Plan Review is a weekly process that helps people to improve the goals they set for their lives. The LPR asks people to report their effort level and results on six questions, which help people to track their progress and to adjust their goals as needed. The LPR also requires people to review their relevance and personal need once a week. People who follow the LPR generally find it to be effective in helping them to achieve their goals. The LPR is an accountability mechanism that helps us measure what's important in our lives and help us bridge the gap between our actions, ambitions, and aspirations. It reminds us to measure what we're doing, and it can help us to improve our performance. Ask help. The author advised us to ask for help. It's important to remember that you don't have to be embarrassed to ask for help. Credibility. Finally, the author talks about the importance of gaining credibility. He says that it is earned twice. First by being competent, and then by being recognized for that competence.